welcome back. I'm Michael Sandler, your host on Inspire Nation, along with... CJ Liu from the Fire It Up with CJ show. woo If you've ever wanted great change for yourself, for the collective, your country, or all of humanity, then do we have the Time Is Now Great Change show for you. Today we'll talk about COVID is Amplifier, a year of reckoning, healing what's under the carpet, and coming together to heal what matters most. But plus we'll talk about the pressure cooker to awaken, dark night of the soul, sleepless nights, college kids on the move, landscape paradise, breathing patterns, business changes, running PRs, clearing house, making space, holding extra shows, hair gone wild, boot games galore, <laughs> and what in the world a squirrel named Hefe has to do with anything. Oh, Hefe! <laughs> Welcome back to the show, CJ. Are you ready to shine? I am ready to shine. I got this one. Ooh. Chakra 5, lavender, frankincense, and blue camille, um, chamomile, which is um, the throat to, like, express, right? To speak up. Speak up, I think up, we all express. get to do that right now. In fact, we were yeah. talking about that before going on air and, and the decisions that get to be made about what you'll talk about and what you won't talk about. But these are the discussions we all get to have right now about what do we <laughs> want to say and share and do moving forward. Because what an important time, no matter where you stand on things, what an important time it is. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's um, before all this COVID thing happened, I was doing that connected breathing class that you saw me in March doing. And uh, it was about... Um, a lot of repressed anger, frustration, and um, sadness about um, times in which I could not speak my voice. I could not, you know, show up as myself. Um, I was abused and or taken advantage of or not treated in the way that I wanted to. Um, you know, I was, I was not attuned abandoned i was not attuned by a, to the powers that be and i was not um i was not i was abandoned i guess i was not attuned and therefore i was abandoned and so i went through this period of incredible rage and i was just like literally down here in my basement i would be i'd say to my husband um you're gonna hear a lot of screaming uh but it's okay <laughs> so i'd be down there <laughs> You know, just like screaming, like it hurt my throat. I was screaming so much. And and the the pieces that were part of it were social conditioning that prevented me from being free to do what I wanted to do. Um, then a sense of not being, then recognizing something happening that recognized in my awareness that I was not being heard, understood, supported and in fact felt abandoned and all these things now I see like that was it was for me I, I went through this kind of process that it feels like the world is going through and I'm going well, through it again with everyone else this is so fascinating because I, I, I am so incredibly hopeful about things I, I am dumbfounded at the same time and, and really this is a year of reckoning and yeah. astrologically back in December we had Dr. Michael Lennox on the show saying uh, that the stars are lining up this year um, as they haven't lined up since 1776. So wow. watch out. Wow. Anything under the carpet from the history of this country or from the founding of this country, any hypocrisy is coming up to the surface. Wow. Oh my God, did he hit it spot on. Yeah. But I'm so, I'm so, I'm so excited, CJ, because at the beginning it was about, there was a lot, there still is, a lot of repressed anger and frustration and rage but on, on one level, we've gotten to the other side of this to where there is, this is a movement. This ain't going away. This is such yeah. a beautiful movement. But now on the other side of it, people are finding the voice. And what you were describing is that creative angst of this wave of energy that had to come out that was unable to. And that's been what it has been in this country for some people. Well, I guess not for some people, for a lot of people for their whole lives and generationally. And now they're speaking their voice. Yeah. Thank and, God they're speaking their and, voice. And, it comes and in, we're coming on the other side. Yeah, we're, and it comes in it. all different forms. Like, So I have some friends who um, were 
had AIDS during the, you know, during the AIDS gay crisis. And they are like, I had to shut up. You know, like there's just like all this rage associated with being gay or as a woman, an Asian woman, like not treated appropriately relative to my older Asian brother. You know, there's all these ways every single person can point to a time when they haven't been heard or understood. It doesn't, it's a unifying, it can be a unifying um, period. I think it's, it's, it, cause, and, and I think it's one, it's, one thing that's interesting is I've seen, you know, white men be like, oh, I don't really understand, you know, like, I don't, like, I can't say anything because, like, I haven't had it that bad. But if you can just attune to, you know, one time that someone didn't understand you and how bad that felt or when you felt abandoned by someone who you really trusted and counted on, you can find that rage and anger and you can understand why someone would want to act out, march, um, express the anger and rage and maybe even be regretful of the way that it's shown up that it hurts others. But I think that, I don't know, I've heard a lot of arguments on whether, you know, there's kind of the change in which it's like adaptive small changes. And then there's this kind of radical, you know, you know, transformational snake peeling off the skin kind of transformation. And both, are important and I think that you know we've had these adaptive changes and this is just kind of a radical change so it's an energy shift it's yeah. something we've talked about on the show an electron state change yeah absolutely. where you don't go where you suddenly find a little of your voice uh-uh <laughs> <laughs> it, it's sort of like the, the mayor of DC today I don't know if you've seen no. that or not which which will be a week old when this kind of comes out but but she is she's concerned about the militarization of her town. Oh yeah, and, I heard that. And so yeah. she 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 took a street of the city, and they blocked it off, which is the street that that goes to I guess Pennsylvania Ave, where where the White House is, and they blocked it off and they painted. It could probably almost be seen from space. Certainly can be seen from aircraft, on on yellow like the 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 color of your street lines. Giant. Black Lives Matter and called it Black Lives Matter Plaza. Wow. And it's like, and wow. It looks like, I don't know, length of a football field or oh, two. Oh, I've got to see this. this. And that was her finding the collective voice for everyone who could not be heard. Yeah, I've seen a lot of really inspiring solidarity. I saw a video where there were soldiers who took the knee along with the protesters. Oh my God, it's been so beautiful. In Seattle, they were doing it too. Oh, I didn't see there, that. There are, there are police officers in Seattle who are taking the knee. Yeah, and then I've seen police officers protesting with the protesters and like grabbing arms and walking along. Like I've just seen some very beautiful things and people who have been scared, like didn't know what to do that. Like I have rich white family from LA that's like figured like they had to do something you know it's like we're normally dormant you know went off and and marched six feet apart but still they marched you know I mean it's like smart protesting so yeah there's just been there so there's a lot of hopeful things and a lot of and I think that people are in different state emotional states of the thing that we're talking about right the hopeful um wow we're really you know, like yes things are changing yes they need to change yes we're moving forward to like i'm scared no <laughs> can't things go back to way we were you know oh, there's, i've done a lot of both. super glue work with coaching clients <laughs> this week because it's been all over that spectrum yeah it's been but out of this chaos this is the no mud no lotus things were stuck i don't care where you are on this political spectrum i love you i love you i love you but things were stuck mm -hmm. and they have come unmoored and unglued. But I believe so that something better can be created. And that's what it feels like in a lot of our lives, stuck in our homes, stuck in our rooms, stuck in our apartments. We felt stuck. And I'm encouraging everyone now is let's shake this look loose. It looks uncomfortable. We've been making these big business changes this year and it feels really radically icky right now. I almost want to say awesome. I won't quite go there, but, <laughs> but that chaos right. 
is necessary. Yep. You you can't grow anything if nothing's alive. If there's no movement, there's no life. That's why I don't go swim in a stagnant pond. Yeah. The um the best thing that I read was well uh, we've talked several times about the idea the metaphor of a butterfly right so the butterfly goes cr- cr- you know crawls into the cocoon um, and during that cocoon they're in a, a liminal state where they're just not quite changed into a butterfly but well, they're not, in goo yeah like they they're dissolving <laughs> digest themselves and dissolve yeah and and during that state i read um it was called aloha dharma they were talking the dark night of the soul, which I don't like that term, but I think that the 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 process that they ex- explained was so on the mark, going from feeling lethargy and not being able to do anything. And, and, and I can't remember all the stages and sequence because personally I experienced them differently to, to being angry um, and uh, fear-based, angry, scared, um, disgusted. Um, revolted, um, <laughs> and and uh, shame. Like there's just all these kinds of experiences that you go through, and so any of those things are in the process. Like when you're dissolving, these are all the different kinds of emotional states that you can have, and it's totally normal. And when I read that, for me, who was going through the we I think I told you this where I would be in meditation and cry like screaming and crying and like shaking and like terrified it's like not what you expect meditation to be but it was releasing all this um they would say in Sanskrit samskara you know karmic kind of unhelpful patterns just or little glitches in the system kind of letting go and releasing and so every scream was one of those things and I and I mentioned this only because you may not be on the other side you may still be in the cocoon and for me it was super helpful to know like oh okay I'm actually dissolving that's why it feels like crap and when you dissolve it's gross right like probably the if the caterpillar or butterfly saw itself they were like oh that's gross like I don't know what I am but it feels disgusting and I'm feeling mad and I'm feeling lost and confused and like obliterated and all normal all all normal states and when I read that I was like oh and here's a beautiful thing it said that once you go through this process of going through that you can reach a place of equanimity because once you churn through all of, um, you called it, what did, um, what did you call it in the beginning? I can't remember the day of reckoning. Once you've reconciled all these things, you can be in a place of equanimity. And what happens is you're going through these things. Like the quickening process is like these kinds of issues are, are churning through so quickly and we're having to deal with them that quickly that there's a quickening in the whole process, um, which is fantastic and 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 infuriatingly hard. <laughs> so that's why I call it COVID is amplifier. Whatever needs to be cleared is coming up and coming up fast and coming up really hard fast. and coming up. Which is perfect. Now is that time. What's what's really cool to me is no matter what stage of going through this you are individually or as a collective, no one will ever be the same. And no one will go back to their powerlessness. After you got those screams out, you had found your voice and you weren't going to stuff it down again. Yeah, yeah. It's, un- it's unleashed. It's done. <laughs> you know, it's, not, it's out of the cage. <laughs> I love it. But you know what? Here's the other thing that um, I will say. Um, I think both of us are so privileged because we're able to meet such wonderful people in our path. Um, some of who are truly enlightened beings. Like I, I know quite a few people that you and I have talked to are truly enlightened. And I've been lucky enough to be either part of their talks or friends. And and not one of them is above this. Like you can be enlightened. You can know your true self is, is like this godlike being. You can, you know, blast energy at other people and have them feel a sense of elation. And every single person that I talk to is still feeling this, like everyone. No one is above or beyond this. 
I've certainly, and I wouldn't use the E word with me or anything even close, but I have certainly, no matter how much work I have done, a lot of wounds have come back right now. Yeah. A lot of wounds. And I almost have to laugh at them because I can see myself saying uh, stupid stuff, shall we say, and going, I can't believe I'm saying stupid stuff right now, but it's coming up to be cleared. It is at a higher level right now yeah. with so much more energy. Well, I love, I love your... Um as my stuff has been kind of boiling over and coming back again, like a resurgence of like this again, I thought I like nailed this. Yeah. You again. And actually here's the thing that I recognized. Cause the other day I, um, you know, I was, I stopped coughing. I stopped screaming and I was like, Oh, I'm over that. And then, <laughs> and then two days later it happened all over again. And I was like, oh, I'm not over that. And I thought, well, what part of you thinks that like there, there was even, uh, this kind of, I'm done, check, it's off the checklist, I'm done, you know, it's like, no, <laughs> it doesn't work that way. And I said, oh, I have to accept that I'm not done yet. And these things are going to come over and over. And it's okay, like the each time they're like, we've talked about, you know, it's evolving and rotating at a higher spiral, you know, of, of understanding, blah, blah, blah. I mean, you don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it when it comes. Yeah. But I have to say that I'm I'm kind of I'm trying to get equanimous about it. So when here it comes again, choo 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 choo, woo, woo, I'm like, oh, here you are again. Hello, my friend. You yeah. know I love you. Thanks for coming back. Guess I guess I still have work to do for the rest of eternity. <laughs> I love you. Please forgive me. I am sorry. Thank you. I love, love you. you. Please forgive me. Yes, I am exactly. sorry. Thank you. Ho'oponopono. Oh, yes. I, I don't typically watch the news. Big stories chase me down. That's why I call it negative worthless stimulation. I've probably watched more in the past few weeks than in the past few years combined. And Jessica's like, what are you doing? And, and I'm like, there is something actually healing to this. And, and what I watch and when I see it, and I'm taking it kind of more of an, an overview is I'm going, all right, what are you trying to get out of this? And what I'm trying to get out of it is what you just described. I'm trying to find the end of things. I'm trying to go, aha, here it is. Here's what's going on. It's clear. I don't need to look anymore. That's not how change works. And so I can watch the insanity of the mind trying to grasp on. Yeah. Is it done yet? Solid. Is it done yet? <laughs> yeah. And it doesn't exist. It's not like a movie where it's like, where's the trailer at the end with the bylines? When it, is this move, bad nightmare going to be over? That's how change happens. Yeah. And so I am watching the uh, watching the news as if it's an egoic journey going on right now, an inner journey of a healing journey of a person who's got, you know, kind of the the, the one thing on one shoulder, the one thing on the other. And you're watching him do this dance. And if you can step back, and in, in, in my better moments, I'll step back and I bring love, and I bring love, and I bring love, and I bring love, and watching what's happening this week, or watching like protesters, if somebody grabs a stone, and other protesters say, no, that's not what we're about. Mm. And I'm like, oh my God, that's so beautiful. It's just such a, mu a messy, ugly, scary, challenging, beautiful process, this yeah, change. Yeah, we're but all going through it. <laughs> It's awesome. We are all going through it. This is a once, certainly this is a once in a generation, but I would say this is more of a once in a modern history of humanity, this whole process. And then the whole process of COVID then brings out these other things, which are in their ways just as bad or worse, but have been hidden. And they're going to go pop, 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 pop. You get to deal with this. You get yeah. to deal with this. This isn't going to be a one-off situation. Yeah, you believe in or freedom. 1776, you believe in freedom, rights of all people. Hello. <laughs> Let's and and actually, I hadn't thought about it really till this moment, but wasn't the U.S. in a sense founded on protests? Yeah. And and things of that sense. I grew up in New England. We were we were shuttled down as kids. I can't tell you how many times to to Bunker Hill and yeah. uh, and Faneuil Hall and, and and brought to all of these places where it took place. Go to the Crack Liberty Bell. And one thing was spoken, another thing was taking place, but it was all coming about by people finding their voice. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's exciting and it's scary and it's 
My kids have been on the move the whole time throughout this whole thing. So they started off in L.A., yep. then they moved to Minneapolis on a plane full of protesters because their friend lives in Minneapolis. Oh. And then and then they then they drove to Chicago where everything was boarded up. <laughs> and it's like and it's been it, it's been so interesting because I finally reached a point where I realized which was the truth all along that, you know, I said, you know, I can't keep you safe. You're responsible for your own life. And I was like, yeah, done. Like that's the main lesson. Oh, there's some peace. <laughs> yeah. It was just like, I can't, I can't keep you safe. Like I want to, I'd love to, I don't want to abandon you and in, in emotionally or physically or safety, you know, like I don't want to abandon you, but mm. I can't keep you safe if you're not, you know, if you're traveling all around the world. And it was, it was actually quite, it's been quite freeing. And I, 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 I was, I actually had a breakdown and I, um, I was like, I can't talk to you anymore. You're triggering me, which I, 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 I don't think really I've, a breakthrough. Yeah. I, I don't think I've ever said that in my child's life in ever, you know? So I was like, you know what? I'm like, I can't even think. I can't even think. I can't, I can't even think. I, 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 let me meditate and I'll call you back in 20 minutes. <laughs> so I oh, sat there and meditated <laughs> and I was like, okay, what the heck is going on? And I came back and I said, ultimately, what I want is to show, you know, to love you. And to love you ultimately is to have you be free and to have freedom to make your own choices. I can give you input, but you have freedom to do whatever you want. So that's my love for you. I'm going to give you the gift of freedom to choose. And, and it pains me. I get scared. And that's something that I have to deal with. But you, you have to deal with also comes with that freedom comes responsibility to own up to your choices and consequences of dealing with them which then came a, a whole nother set of conversation that i won't tell you about but it was like a huge like that pressure kind mm -hmm. of came to but the key thing was it's like the pressure and then the contemplation it's the outer and inner i think that has been so important in this whole dance right Tension relaxation. I couldn't agree more. So we could call this the yoga of life or the, <laughs> the, the yoga of COVID. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> so how are you doing with all your business changes? You're running PR. You're doing all this stuff, Michael. How are you doing with all the – like these are huge foundational changes that you're going yeah. through. I know I'm doing them well, but as nutty as the next person, the emotions come up, the emotions come down, and, and I'm just – riding those waves. I know I'm more centered. I know that my, um, we'll get there with Hefe in a minute, but my squirrel meditations have just been <laughs> delicious. I have no other way to put it. No squirrels were harmed in the making of this deliciousness, <laughs> but um, <laughs> my running is the best it has been in a oh, decade, decade and a half. I can't even wow. say. Um, so I, I went out yesterday and I went for, for a, a PR in this course I, I, I live What's a PR, uh, running PR per, what is person, it? personal record. Oh, wow. And so there is a, there's a volcano or mountain, depending on what you, what you feel it is. It's 14,000 feet. It's behind the house and you can run up. I'm at 6,500 feet. You can run up to about 9,000 feet wow, to see over Michael. the ridge to see the mountain. And, and that's like a two or three hour journey. Um, and I've been chipping away at it and, um, uh, my record up there was somewhere between an hour and three, hour and four recently. Which of just was running or what you're like? Of run, running up running. thousands of feet, trail running. Oh, oh it's, Jeez, all, it's all trails. And then yesterday I turned a, uh, I think it's a 122.39 for up and back. Wow. And wow, like, Michael. Wow. So, and, and I'm like, and, and, and there's a ways to go with that. Wait, how many miles is that? Uh, miles wise. Hold on here. Cause I, <laughs> I, 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 did you just it, do it, it before we were talking? 5.05, <laughs> 5.04 miles. I did it in 122.53, an average pace of 16.26. 
with um, 2000 and hold on, we're loading here. Activity is loading with um, 2,112 feet up. 2112. I love that it's that, that I, I, digit that way. I, I, for, for those of, of you who don't live in mountainous areas, that's a lot in a short. <laughs> like, <laughs> Because I actually so one time climbed up, up and two thousand feet I know because I climbed I think that amount and it took me I think probably half a day, and it was through snow. I mean it was through snow with gators and like everything yeah. and, but it's a lot when you go. It's that's a huge like. Are we talking like this kind of incline or we're we're talking very steep. I run with poles. Are the poles necessary? No, but it's 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 oh, really yeah, it's really steep good on, on your side. knees. Yeah. So. Um, but it's just. How did you come down? Were you just? Was it snowing up there? No, nope, not snowing up there. I came down. Um, I got up in 49 minutes and some odd seconds. My goal, my goal for blowing my record out of the water, because I'm just watching these changes. And this has to do with today, in that the 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 outer represents the inner. Mm -hmm. If if my inner wasn't in a decent place right now, there's no way the outer would be able to do that. Yeah. And and so it was 49 minutes and some odd seconds to get up. And then it was uh, just over 30 minutes to get down, which is the big deal for me because 30 minutes I, to get down. That's really fast. I, I, I have if you're listening to this and go, oh, Michael could do this. I have twin titanium femurs, twin titanium hips. I've had six, seven knee operations on the left knee. No ACL, uh, supposedly no lateral or medial meniscus and on and on it goes. And the body is clipping along. Wow. It's and, and I turned 50 and two two and a half months oh my so, gosh michael that's fantastic god who would have thought okay uh, 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 <laughs> oh my goodness okay so how about cleaning the house so cleaning house is metaphorical and literal so during this time as COVID as amplifier and i believe it is now that you make those great changes you make those great runs you make those great marches whatever you follow this flow of energy the biggest calling i'm getting right now is to get lighter and to clear space. And we've been making trip after trip of donations or to the sports replay store and getting lighter and lighter still. And the, the crazy thing about it is, and if I look around at the studio and, and I like my outer to be a reflection of the inner, maybe my outer is a reflection of the inner right now. There's a lot of chaos around me as you pull things out of your closet, pull things out of your basement to get rid of them, it actually becomes more chaotic. I know. I we have not. My husband had that inclination to organize, and I was like, "Really? Let's not. Let's not do that." <laughs> He's like, "We need to clean out the basement." And I'm like, "Really? Let's not. I can't do it." But do you feel better? I mean, or is it feel oh, yeah. you're you're in process well, I feel with both. that too? I feel, it, and that's the paradox. What we're holding right now, and I was talking with Mitch Horowitz on the show about this a couple of days ago, is we are in a state of paradox. We are holding two states at the same time. We are holding tension and relaxation. We are holding, um, I have the power to get my voice out there and I feel completely disempowered. Yeah, liminal in that same state, space. right? Like in between yes. place, Bardo. <laughs> exactly what we're talking about. So on the one hand, the environment is much lighter. On the other hand, it looks chaotic. So it depends which moment you catch me, how I am feeling about things. And all I know is that I feel better if I keep, stepping forward mm -hmm. as long as i keep stepping forward okay the place looks like well not how i'd like to show things off to people however am i making changes yes are things improving yes uh, you could ask me about the challenges that i had on my run which seems kind of silly but there are all these nuances because i look at sport as art and, and I am trying to sculpt my, my David, like Michelangelo, trying to sculpt my David with my running. And I can tell you all the chaotic points and stuff. But as long as you keep stepping forward, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah, that's a really good way of thinking about it. Because it's never going to be perfect, right? The whole idea of perfection is just a con conceptual thing that will drive you crazy. If you just move forward and you put your best foot forward, that's all you can really ask for, right? So what kind of business changes are you, what kind of, are we already talked about your business changes enough? I don't well, really know what they we're, are. We're working, we're working to, to streamline, to make things more efficient, to be able to back off from so much busyness, because if there's one area that admittedly I would like to be in greater alignment with what I teach and share with everybody else, 
is there is still too much of the busyness in our business. And I'm not complaining about it. I will complain on the quieter moments going, oh my God, I'd like to be able to rest now, but it's changing. But it feels very chaotic in that process. You put things in place, you check them and you evaluate them. And lots of times I feel, and this is a key point, I feel like particularly this week with holding extra shows because when stuff went down, when stuff goes down, I'm going on the mic. I'm going on the mic because I feel like it's my time to serve and it's important to serve and help people during that time. But we're coming to the end of Friday here and my egoic mind, actually my logical mind, forget about egoic mind, would like to show me how you've gone backwards this week. You've worked more, you've, you've this last, you da, 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 da. In the moment, that's how it feels. I'm sure it's not that way. My egoic mind is going, don't believe it or don't bet on it. But it feels like you're going backwards when you're in the chaos. I don't believe that to be the case for any of us. But it is hard to see when you take a snapshot in the moment. That's and fair. I think that's actually for the collective as well. In the moment, it looks like a riot. No other way right. to put it. But when yeah. you step back, something more is at play. Mm -hmm. There are all these little subtle nuances that you have to look deeper to see. Yeah. Yeah, I feel, you know, my, my tendencies of like overworking, overdoing, like putting out a product that's like, but do I really need to do it at this level? Is kind of like, I'm like questioning and moving forward, but this time I'm like questioning a little bit um, and kind of noticing that when I'm doing it, it's not doing these kind of things that I know how to do, which is marketing. Mm -hmm. And putting together marketing plans, am I doing it from a place of joy or am I doing it from a place of like, oh my God. <laughs> and it's some place in between and I'm trying to change, you know, so that there's more kind of joy or at least neutrality um, to doing that. So I've been noticing that in myself and then also um, how letting go of my children is now taking another another view you know like really giving them true freedom to decide even when i don't agree or yeah. luckily what what my son said because i i lost my temper i said and i i wrote him back i'm like i'm sorry i i'm i'm sorry to have lost my temper but i think that there are consequences to your decisions and this is one of them and so part of what you have to do is live with the consequences of your decisions um, especially when they affect others and he wrote back, and he, I talked to him the other day, and he said, Mom, you know what? There are a lot of parents that give their kids freedom, but then they don't, like, they're free to run all over the place, but then they also cause all sorts of havoc and problems, and, like, they're free, and their parents don't care free. And then there are people who parents do care, but they're not free. And he said, you're kind of, it's, he's like, I actually feel lucky that you do care about us deeply. And you're allowing us to be free. And I was like, wow. Like, first of all, what a great kid to actually even be able to see and articulate that. But it did make me feel good. <laughs> so it did. Progress. <laughs> Ooh all right. Let's talk about a few more of these things here. Yeah. I, I know I was, I was mowing for the first time this week because uh, we got our sprinklers going. What yeah. in the world is, is landscape paradise? Okay. I'm, I'm. I am so excited. Right before COVID happened, um, um, we we had the grass front lawn that we thought, well, keep the grass because when the kids are outside and we want to play, roll the ball back and forth. You know, we, we've did that like five times <laughs> during our whole childhood. And, and then how I many said, times did you mow? Exactly. <laughs> and I said, it's time to get rid of that. So we have this beautiful flagstone porch and we bought all these beautiful plants and it's like it's not it's like has this beautiful design where it kind of arcs like a river through our yard i mean it's just it's just gorgeous i'm so happy so but before that they came in before covid and they dug up our whole yard so there's this you know how when any that kind of work happens it kind of feels like ah, you know, like, oh my God. everything we're talking about today it <laughs> looks like a disaster and you think you've taken a hundred steps backwards <laughs> exactly and it's like, why did we have these people do it? Oh, my God. So it's been like, it's looked awful for, well, just like a couple of weeks ago. And so it's just been a, a lawn torn up with like grass and stones and 
for like all through this COVID instance. But they came. Um, my great Sam, um, landscape Samuel came yesterday, uh, two weeks ago, and they put this most gorgeous porch. It looks amazing, and there's all these new plants, and it just looks. I look at the window, and I just feel so. It's like brightness and flowers. It just. I don't know. It just makes me so happy. And generally now in Seattle, I don't know what it's like in Colorado, but it's beautiful everywhere that you walk. Like nature is vibrant and alive. Like, like I've never seen it before. I I don't know if it's, is that like, is it still snowing? Like what's it like there? No, it's not still snowing. Last year it was still snowing at this point. Um, But now everything is really greened up. Um, I like to, I like to say we are our land and I want to get to know the land wherever I'm at. And so we have a lot of cactus around here and I've been watching cactus. And, and cactus cause it's, it's, um, a semi-arid climate here, semi-arid wow. high altitude climate. So semi-desert and, wow. um, uh, a lot of the cactus have just gone, their flowers have just gone into bloom and they don't bloom every year, oh. but this year they've gone into bloom just in the last couple days. And and that is so special to see and to see all, all the bees and things like hummingbirds going for these the nectar and these flowers is just so special. And everything's greened up right now. You don't know how long it's going to last. Will it keep raining through the summer or will it be kind of dry? But uh, everything is really, really green here right now. So it 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 does look beautiful and special. And the, the rivers are up, but there's there wasn't that much snow. So they're not going to flood. So it's it's very life like yeah or life filled right now yeah okay so what's happening with hefe so hefe is uh the biggest squirrel of of the bunch we have we when i meditate now i will have at least dozens it might be 30 40 chipmunks that will come into my lap now it's it's crazy and golden mantle squirrels which look like a chipmunk but they're halfway in size between a chipmunk and a squirrel. Wait, can, I, can I just take a slight break to explain to people who may not have any idea what you're talking about? And it sounds really strange, but explain like what, how, how this so thing I, occurred. I, 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 li- I live out where there's nature all, all around me. And um, I have a nice deck out, out of our, of our uh, house. And, and um, I can sit on the deck and I admittedly will have bird seed in my hand and a chipmunk will come up and a second chipmunk will come up and 10 chipmunks will come up and then golden mantle squirrels. Come up to you in your lap and sit. Oh, they'll sit in my lap. They'll go on my shoulders. I've had one or two in my hair, which is kind of cool. You had them in your hair? It was really, really cool. Okay, what were they doing in your hair? They're kind of scouting things out, waiting for their chance to get down in my lap. It's really, really cool. And there's, of course, there's a pecking order within each species. (laughs) And there's a pecking order between species. Um, although I've see, I saw this morning, what did I see? Uh, like a little chipmunk trying to push away a bigger squirrel. <laughs> okay, what's the pecking order? Because I would have thought, you know, squirrel, it's, the biggest it's size. Chip- it's it's typically size, but there is personality involved as well. Okay. Um, and and so there you'll have your little Napoleons who might, you know, try to push around some of the bigger ones a little bit. <laughs> what was the chipmunk doing to the squirrel? Taking its its little paw and pushing at the face of the squirrel to push it out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the last time I talked to you, you okay, you were okay with the chipmunks, but you had gotten your finger bitten off by a squirrel, so you weren't really sure. Well, not bitten off, but this this was, this was decades ago. Yeah, a long time ago. ago yeah. Okay, I'm not trying to malign that squirrel. I'm just saying that, that and then, but you were kind of a little bit had some trepidation. Then you got to a point where you're giving squirrel massages or chipmunk and squirrel massages where they come in your hand and I guess you're giving them a little belly massages and they just sit on there. Sides. On their sides. On their I sides. Do a little bit on the belly, but I, I, I don't know where my hand is, so we're gonna go, I'm not going to go there. But, <laughs> but on their sides. So I have all three species in my hand at once or in my hands or on my lap now. at once. Yes. Yes. Although the, with the pecking order, sometimes <laughs> they won't all stay there at once. Wait, What's, how many of them are on your lap? Maybe five, six at the <laughs> most at one. Maybe actually a little bit more. They're, they're skittish and they move like flocks of birds. What do you mean? And so they they'll, they'll like... all, be in your lap, all be in your lap and all of a sudden something will spook and they'll bolt. 
and then they'll come back sort of like if you go to the edge of the water and you watch the birds run out with the tide and run back in that's almost what they might do in my lap is they'll all come onto my lap and then something will spook them and they might run and they does come it back hurt like is lap. it like a cat where they kind of like when you they get scared no no they're not clawing in at all oh. so uh the, the 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 most that i've seen is with the bigger squirrels I try to keep plenty of seeds in my hand because if they're in a hurry because there's a pecking order among the squirrels, they might be wolfing food up too much and I don't want them to wolf it up to where all of a okay, sudden. Okay, so your hand is like this and yep. like what, ha is the other hand I'm, giving I'm the sitting, massage? I'm, I'm sitting like this. Okay. My hand's out in a bowl. Okay. And they will either be eating my hands or sitting in my hand and I can run with my thumb. <laughs> Oh, so each right of, so one flank. crawls in at a time. So you have five one sitting in. One or two at a time, but I'll have others on my legs, on my arms, on my shoulder. Chewing. Um, uh, chewing or sitting, just being. No, queuing up. They're getting ready oh, yes, to take. Queuing, yes, queuing. yes, queuing. Okay. <laughs> and it's a very fast, amorphous thing. And Hefe, he's, he's, he or she, we, we haven't, uh, we respect her privacy or his privacy, um, is the biggest of the bunch, which is as big as a small cat. What? Um, it's huge. No, like, okay, no, show me with your hands now. How big is it? Four to five pounds. Oh, my so gosh. Like that. That's like and a huge tail, squirrel. Almost a foot foot long and then a tail on beyond that. No, there's a tail. I thought it was like with the tail. And then no. a tail. And then oh a tail. Oh, my gosh. I these, don't think I've ever seen a squirrel. Big. These aren't city squirrels. These are, well, I don't know. If, if there's a city squirrel living behind, like, a good Italian restaurant, it might be. But... <laughs> <laughs> These squirrels are big. Will you and please watch, have Jessica film you doing this? I just have, I have to see I it. have a little film of, of me, of Jessica doing it. I don't think it, we have anything. I'll see. I'll see what I can Will do. Will you see please what and post it on Facebook? I was thinking just about, it this me. Morning, I need to about see. how to set up a tripod to do this. One thing I've noticed on my watch is the lowest heart rate I get of the day is sitting with the squirrels. Wow. It's I can't even say at the beginning I was dropping down into a very deep state, yeah. space or state so that I was giving them the silence that they needed to be safe. Now in my mind, I actually find wanders and chitter chats as much as in any meditation and you bring it back. But my heart rate is in such a state of coherence wow. that it drops so low with I my... <laughs> imagining like a little heart rate you know heart math i just imagine an article What's like on? here's what <laughs> here's basically what you can do next time you want to get your heart down Squirrel coherence i'm Squirrel. telling you it's a thing but it doesn't it make is... any logical sense because squirrels are kind of like <laughs> but these squirrels are kind of calm they're calm and they will be very as a general rule, calm to be with me either because i'm calming or because i'm a giant and they don't want to freak out the giant because they don't know how the giant is going to react. Wow. But just having all of these little beings with you and yeah. enjoying that time together is just, it's oh, just heaven. Please put a video together. It doesn't have to be fancy. I just want to see them. I love little chipmunks. So oh, all right. Well, <laughs> we'll, we'll do. We'll, we'll get it. Jessica asked me this morning because I'm out more than her if I, if I recognize individual ones yet. Yeah. And there are a few I do, but most I don't. And then part of it is I'm in a gaze. I'm not trying to, to just stare them down. Although I've started speaking to them a little bit. How was your morning? How are you doing? Oh, so cute. I'll go back into my meditation. So You're like Snow White. Your, your whole family is like Snow White. Oh, my gosh. Well, it's, it's our natural way of being. This whole conflict with nature, beat nature, cold, cruel world, whatever it is, kill or be killed, it's all backwards. We are children of nature. We are of the earth. We're walking, talking expressions of the earth. Every cell of our being came from the earth. Technically, every cell of our being came from the stars. We are stardust. We are one. And when we start to embody that, if you become a little bit, I hadn't thought of it that way, snow white, in, snow white instead of grumpy. Yes. <laughs> I guess, I don't know who you would be, but um, I don't know. But I guess Jessica's Snow White. You can take Snow White, too. So I'll, I'll say maybe I have a, a fractional, 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 fractional piece of a percentage 
of like a, a uh, St. Francis. Yeah. Well, your hair, looks... your hair is growing towards a Snow White scenario. Long, so, beautiful, wavy hair, Michael. You're almost there's there. There's a certain point at which, oh, well, <laughs> I've, I've had it down uh, uh, well below my shoulder. Really? Twice. Wow. Twice. Oh, so, Jessica, show pictures I'm of sure that. Not, well, if you go to mindfulrunning.org, you'll at least see me with my curls. Not with it that long, but you'll see me with my curls if oh, you go wow. to mindfulrunning.org. Yeah, okay, I'll take a look. If you look up Michael Sandler, um, Barefoot Snow, or something like that, my, you Google Michael that. Sandler, but Barefoot Snow? Let's see, yes. Michael Sandler. I'll go with you. Michael Barefoot Sandler, Snow. Barefoot Snow. Oh. <laughs> no, your hair's not that curly in here. Hold on here. Are you looking at Mindful Running? I'm looking. Yeah, your hair's not that curly, Michael, but it is long. It depends where and when you catch me. Okay. So, but I'm trying to see. Um, I don't see my picture now of running barefoot in the snow. Usually, it's high up there. Those are. I mean, there are pictures of me barefoot in the snow, but with uh, with uh, what you might call it, shorter hair. One last check here, Michael Sandler snow. Oh, here. Okay, here's ah, one for your mindful. Is. Okay. Oh, there's your hair curly. I see it. Wow, you look really different with your hair long like that. And and I'll I'll take an image here. It's a, I don't know why it's coming across damn and sorry everybody you can't see it. It's off of somebody's blog from from uh, a good decade ago, but this will be one image you can see with me with my longer hair Are you which it on when the Jessica landscape? when Jessica met me, uh, she cut my hair within a month. I grew it longer on Maui again and then uh, we cut it again and I'm told I can't grow it long again. Why? Oh, because she doesn't want you to. Oh, my gosh, bit... Michael, look okay. at that. Okay, I, we have to share the Skype so people can see this. <laughs> what are you seeing there, CJ? I'm looking at the two pictures of you with long hair, and I, we've got to share it. No, I can't because you're the, you're the Skype owner, I think. Okay, well, maybe next time. All I'm right. The... Oh, I'm not sure what that means. You know means. how you share images on Skype? Oh, you can share images to me. I can? I don't know yeah. if I can. Okay. You just drag it across into your chat. Oh, no, no. I'm saying on, on the screen. Oh, I don't. I can't even see your face anymore. What have I done, Michael? All right. In, in, there, in theory, if you send me the image, in theory, I could, well, well, you need it for a video. I don't, I don't know what you need it for. Oh, no, you're uh, showing it on Skype now. Wait, what am I looking at? Am I looking at, oh, no, okay, you have it on Skype. Never mind. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so I you're see. looking at the same image of me running through the snow barefoot yes. with, long, yes. with long brown curly locks. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, this is what at the end of COVID, this may be what you look like. I don't know. I haven't. I have no plans of of growing it out now. But we we shall see. But it's all it's all change. It's all good. And maybe hair is the ultimate metaphor, which is at one point the hair seems perfect. Then it seems to grow out of control, and there's nothing you can do it anything with it at all. And then you hit another equilibrium point at which it looks good again, and then it goes out of equilibrium again, and then you hit another equilibrium <laughs> point. And if you just base where you're at based on whether your hair is looking good at the moment, you won't realize that things are growing and continuously changing. You'll just think, I've got chaos or wearing Medusa's <laughs> snakes on my hair. I had the same exact conversation with my husband. How profound, <laughs> but it's true. It's true. I love very, it. It's very a perfect cool. way to so, wrap it up. Anything last that you want to share with people today? Uh, I, I am good. I'm good. And, and for myself, I would say go for it. Whatever impulse overtakes you right now, coming from a place of love for great change, you go for it with everything that you've got. Now is the time. Let's surf this energy of change because it's real. It's a creative angst of humanity at this moment here to help us all raise to the higher level. So don't be scared when you have your, I've got to go into the basement and scream moment. <laughs> yes. Embrace and the are, scream. We are all there right now. And, and if you're not screaming, then check in with yourself and see what is going on. <laughs> but just love yourself up and love everyone. I got to go here for a second. Love everyone in whatever capacity you have love everyone up right now because we 
all need it and we're all going through this together as one. So for everyone out there, this is Michael Sandler and CJ Lee from the Fired Up with CJ show. Say be well, have fun, embrace the long hair curls, running mountains, (laughs) feeding squirrels, playing with hefe, landscaping, college kids, dark nights at the soul, pressure cookers, sleepless nights, embrace it all. And above and beyond all else, shine bright. (laughs) Woohoo! It means so much to me that you're listening to the show. I would love your support in any way by giving me comments below or to subscribe to the show or share the show with friends. Thank you again for your support. Love and blessings.